alien doesn't necessarily have to represent someone that's off planet. It could be someone that's alien to the way that you you see yourself. People will come into their 50s and think it's suddenly realize they have lived somebody else's life because they didn't want to object, because they wanted to go along with the herd. And they suddenly become aware this is not who I am and this is not who I want to be. George mm-hmm. loves the word, actually. Actually, mm-hmm. he was about 14. Yeah, that's my earth. Show, you know. So that's my <laughs> trigger. I'm giving it back to him. In the room, 52 Jokers Wild. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Friday. And our special guest this week is Doreen Ritchie, who is a life and executive coach. We may again have a chance to talk about some of those things, but probably not, because we'll go off into the universe and fly around, find that little restaurant that uh, Garvin mentioned a few weeks ago and have a cup of coffee and then come back to the pub and have a little bit of a, a drink somewhere along the line. So that's that's normally where we go with these things. And we have no idea what's going to happen between now and the next 40 to possibly 45 minutes. So hopefully, Doreen, you're happy enough with that. We had a good Absolutely, conversation the other day. Yes. Go with the flow. Go with Go the flow. With the flow. <laughs> so there we have it. And I know we've been going with the flow today because I know that, Doreen, you had uh, roadworks out going on outside causing uh, all kinds of yeah, mayhem r- for you. R- roof works. Roof works. They're all roof crawling works. over. Roof works. <laughs> so, roof. 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 <laughs> roof, roof. It's roof, roof. It's rough. <laughs> it is rough. It's rough and they're roof. all crawling over the roof and cutting bits off and drilling and putting bits back on and so on and so forth. So it's right outside my window practically because I'm first floor and the roof is one one story. So they're like, hi, looking in, you know, 50 oh. So it was so noisy this morning. I just thought like, there's no way we're going to be able to hear each other. So. Or, you know, oh, we'll hear each other, but right. you would have had all this in the background. Yes. Oh, exactly. that's good. That's good. <laughs> then it sounds as if we put these sound effects in. It looks as if we're... Well, they might still go. Something. They're still there. So let's see. Now, <laughs> can you see the crack in the back? Is well, that I'm not looking, now, but yes, it? you could if you looked. Yes, Garvin, you could. The but crack in the roof. Yeah, the crack in the roof, the back of the roof there now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we're... Now, we're I'm, we're in the process of starting to talk to the, the people that could come in and change all our windows. And one of the guys oh, was saying, yeah. oh, that bit there, you're going you're gonna to have to get a plaster in, sort that out before mm-hmm. we can get our lads on here. We're going to go, right. And Garvin's sort of favourite uh, special effect, shding. I, <laughs> shding. Actually, I, was just about to do it. I said, I go, ching, ching. But I said, no, I'll let him at it. You know, because that, that's what we were just saying before it started. All I was hearing walking up the hall yeah. while reading this email was ka-ching, 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 yeah. ka-ching, yeah. ka-ching. Now, I don't know what the opposite ka-ching is. If you're getting the ka-ching, that's good. You're making yeah. the money. Yeah, what's, the, the, what's the noise for that? Yeah. What else is ka-ching? Yeah. Then this is costing you money. So <laughs> and it it's, keeps on going up and you're going for nothing, for fresh air. You know, exactly. and, I'm go- and that's my little bit of... I, we just tra- addressed it before we came on and my worry kicks into overload. Not worry, I just don't want to be paying money. I don't, I don't want to pay money at all for anything. Now, <laughs> now I have to be realistic. So I have to pay money for something. I have to pay yeah. it for something you want, something you need, not something you didn't know about that was a bill for nothing that is going to cost you your time to, to engage with yeah. them. Yeah, and th- And it's going to end up... A, this whole sentence was, it was a bunch of nothings. I have to pay a bill to prove I don't have to pay a bill. Yeah. You know, and, and it's really annoying. And I'm a bit yeah. frustrated. And that's the language of, and you'll probably back me up here, accountants, solicitors, surveyors, <laughs> and that bunch. Yeah, that- exactly. And I mean, they just, as I said, it's like jobs for the boys up here. You know, it's like, you know, oh, I've got to be, a, yeah, he can be, the, he can be the solicitor, you can be the quantity surveyor. And you, can, you know, and we'll all get together and let's see how much we can charge everybody, yeah. basically, you know, and what's in it for us. Now, what that's maybe, a bit, maybe it's a bit unfair, but yeah, it's generally like that, isn't it? We're going to make it equal because our last couple of uh, interviews or, or shows, we're, we're having to become, because we're the boys, me, myself and George now, we'll pretend to be the boys. We are the boys. <laughs> we're the older boys. We're the old lads. I think we're the lads. The old we're lads. lads. Yeah, but, yes. but we have to be very cognizant now of being gender neutral or biodiversity i don't know if it's bio, not biodiversity it's the other one it's but diversity <laughs> not biodiversity. biodegradable yeah yeah but yeah. so therefore it's no longer we talked to laurie like our, our, one of our last guests and she see now we have to use this language of you know gender neutral okay it's not jobs yeah. for the boys because we were no. talking about the trades and girls get into the trades or stem yeah. and now it's 
It's not jobs for the girls. It's not jobs for the boys. It's job for people. And we can't even leave out the aliens because they might be offended. <laughs> So it's jobs for whoever or whatever yes. that can do the jobs. That are totally unnecessary, yes. Planet so neutral. have to be very mindful of who we're talking about and who we're all <laughs> against. It, it's interesting that um, we're, we're also finding that we're talking to quite a few coaches, uh, not mm -hmm. not the ones that bus people around because they're, they're stopped now, you know, <laughs> exactly. or, or the coach makers. The coach makers are done. But people that are sort of helping others develop their mm -hmm. life skills and things. And and I, I believe you, you'd, you'd move from one area into another yeah, a few years Yeah, for 22 back. years I was in business and finance, sort of qualified accountant years ago and um, ended up in the public sector. And by that stage, basically, I was totally, you know, disillusioned with anything to do with the public sector or finance or business. And um, walked away from it then about four years ago and sort of um, that was part of totally changing my life around. So um, I decided to take a year and find out what I really wanted to do because I'm preaching this to people, but I'm thinking, well, what do I really want to do? So I then trained as, um, as a life and executive coach and then set up my business the following year. But my whole life was all dealing with, you know, problems with teams and bringing teams on and developing teams on people and their personal development in work kind of thing. So um, I had a really good idea of the problems that people have, both in, you know, management and people who are, you know, at the bottom of the heap kind of thing. So that's why I thought, well, look, you know, I can maybe advise people to this. But then I didn't realize, of course, if you're a coach, you don't advise anybody about anything. That's it. You actually. <laughs> so my big thing is really keeping quiet and stopping advising and stopping trying to fix because I'm like Mrs. Fix it kind of thing. So, so that's been my challenge with coaching to stop doing that and actually question properly and question sort of well so that they come to that conclusion themselves and then they have the insight and then they learn it. Because no, you I only heard learn you. it if you have a realisation and an insight, you know? I'm going to troll one because you, you do know that George is, you know, real reality. I'm yep. more abstract. You know, I'm a bit left field. He's right field. Don't know yeah, I never got into the abstract painting, although I have recently got into well, some abstracts where, where you create little circles and you join them with lines and then colour them all in. It's we were only talking earlier on that most time, if you listen to some of our shows in isolation and picked one or other of us, you're going to have a different experience. I was even listening to her. My, actually, I was walking down. I was doing a bit of painting last night and my wife came out to where I was. And she heard me talking. It wasn't me talking. It was the show talking. And she says, you can't be seriously <laughs> listening to that whatever yourself. And I says, I'm not listening to myself. I'm listening to George. I just happen to be the other person there. And I'm listening to the show. And she says, you're not fed up with that yet. I says, no, it's good advice. I'm, I'm, I'm just listening to it. And then I'm acting on it. And she says, I can't listen to it. I says, have you actually listened to the show? And she said, no. Have I, I said, well, 80 something shows it. Have you listened to a single show? <laughs> no, I can't stand your voice. So therefore I can't <laughs> listen to whatever rubbish you're talking about because your voice grates on me. So I said, great. I'll go back and do what I'm doing. Oh my but, God, how long are you married? No, it's great. I mean, the thing is, I don't know if she'd ever get any value out of anything we're talking about because she mm. never listens to me anyway. <laughs> and she doesn't want to, she says, who the hell would want to listen to you and that grating voice anyway? But what I was doing was, I was listening to what I was saying for a piece of it and I was realising I'm talking in images. Mm -hmm. And I'm realising as well, if someone didn't know what we were talking about, they wouldn't know what they, wouldn't, they, they may just be visualising the imagery type talk, but they may not be subconsciously going, let's, let's say our last show was taught, it wasn't, mm -hmm. we weren't talking about cocktails. We were equating the cocktails to life experiences. Mm -hmm. If you want to point at Guinness, you know what you're going to get. But if you're going, if you're going to get a nice mixed up cocktail in a, in a very, very, you know, a Tom Cruise cocktail bar, it's entertaining, it's exciting, it's mm -hmm. mixed up. There's, there's, you're trying to say you want a bunch of cocktail experiences of yeah. in your life not yeah. just straight guinness stout yeah. harp mix yeah. it up a bit that's what we're saying but yeah. if you listen to it in the wrong timeline it was what cocktail is he talking about there <laughs> i don't recognize the cocktail <laughs> that's not sex on the beach or, or a bloody mary what what's what, what what is this rubbish they're talking about but then george comes back in and goes no no that was life experiences and what yeah. we're saying is and for the for the visually impaired this is abc <laughs> and that's what i realized this morning we're t we're just maybe left hand right hand side mm. of the brain talking we might be talking in images we might be talking of facts but to get our message across it really depends on the audience and how they sublimely visualize it 
Well, but the absolutely. thing is that we have to be we have to be cognizant of the fact that there are a third of our group of people who are probably visual learners, another lot that are auditory learners, and another lot that are kinesthetic learners. No, I was just yeah, saying that. Right. There's three ways. Of yeah, absolutely. And whenever I'm coaching, I need to be cognizant of that as well. Sometimes I do an actual hugely long um, questionnaire thing with people if I'm not sure, you know, because normally I can pick it up from them by their answers and things and the way they sit and so on. But but sometimes I've got to do a questionnaire just to see if yeah. people are one thing or the other, because sometimes you can be, you know, talking to somebody and one person will get it really quickly. And then the next then the next person comes in and you're saying the same sorts of things and the other person really doesn't absolutely have a clue what you're talking about. You know, and, and again, like like Gordon said, some of it was maybe visual and this person is not visual at all and they're just not getting it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, so there's this key words that are kind of giveaway, which is really kind of interesting that, um, you know, you, I, you get people kind of saying, oh, look, I, 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 it's, it doesn't sound right, George, you know, for goodness yeah. sake. And you kind of go, right auditory yeah. another person will kind of say look i can't see what you're talking about mm -hmm. and then the third person will kind of go it just doesn't feel right, right. George. Yeah, <laughs> and you're going to go right okay i know yeah. that's that's them and we'll just yeah. we'll see if we can work out and i'm going to touchy feel you or we can mm. take you know auditory one kind of thing mm. and you try and tell stories that kind of fit into that sort of way, of, right. way of looking at things and it's really it's funny actually because my partner's italian and in italian they say sentire which is feel for taste for here, for everything. So it wouldn't work in, the, in Italy. You know, oh, that, that kind of looking yeah. wouldn't work because they say feed for everything. Yes, yeah, yeah. so it depends what they're saying. You know, they can't say, of course, the proper verbs, of course. Yes. But yeah. just in general, in general speech. So he'd like say, well, I don't, I don't feel that when he's tasting something. No, I don't feel that. And I, you know, that's not, and I'm going, you mean taste? Because, well, oh, I, was, yeah, I was in Birmingham a couple of years ago. <laughs> uh, not a couple of years ago. It was 22, a couple of decades ago, actually, it turns out now, <laughs> as, I'm, as I'm thinking back uh, in the early sort of uh, uh, 2002 sort of period. And again, we, because I tend to deal with colour and you'd have all the different colours. And yeah, I think we were looking at a project that had the seven deadly sins and each one of them had a certain colour. And I started talking to some of the people over there that came from either a Hindu background or from a Muslim background. And they're kind of going but we don't equate to those colours the same way as you do yeah. in the West. We have a different colour scheme and we associate yes. them with different things. Yeah. And that, yeah. that caused a few sort of problems because I was kind of going, right, so how do I write this story I'm trying to tell when, when if you're trying to be open to everybody, everybody mixes different colours and they get different, yeah. different images. Yeah. So you're yeah. pumping out a whole load of different things to them, which I think is quite Yeah, I just funny. think it sort of points out that like communication is very, very, very subjective. Not just not just for the person, but actually the society they grew up in. Like that jobs for the boys, you know, that originally meant, you know. Girls, um, girls, persons. I know, but that, which is yeah. which is not politically correct, that, <laughs> correct you know. Anymore. But what I mean is that, like, that, that arose out of the troubles, you know. So so that's what it means to yeah. us, if you yeah. know what I mean. So, um, so that would be even different to what it would mean to you, you know what I mean. So it just depends on, you see, the circumstances, the society, the, you know, everything. Yeah. Let's flow in the left field that Garvin usually does at some point, so around about this sort of point in time. We're talking about communicating with other humans on this planet. And within the next month, they're going to release a report to say whether or not there are oh UFOs God. with aliens in them. Then you kind of go, right, how do we communicate with someone that's not even from this planet that may not even look like us uh, or and visualizes things in a different spectrum and uses different noises like, like the yeah. old dolphins do, you know? <laughs> Bringing the sort of uh, I hitchhiker's guide before. to the galaxy in there. I'm going to set the pace. <laughs> Go on, then. Now, the strange thing is, if there is an announcement, and we're going to guess it's just going to say there is something, has been something, there's more of it, then it's always been here. Therefore, mm -hmm. there's nothing to communicate with. I mean, more than likely, they've already been training us. Mm -hmm. The gadgets we're seeing, the, the phones, the journey from Star Trek to sort of fact to fiction or fiction to fact with the with, with the various tech that we have in the last hundred years, mm. we're more than likely more than likely have been trained up. It's they're they're bringing us up into their language of binary ones and zeros or or wavelengths or or just why couldn't they if they, if they can fly from you know, X light years away, I guarantee you they can speak English, French, German, and Japanese. There's yeah. no problem yeah. there. Yeah. So what do you think then, Garvin? Do you think 4,000 years ago, whenever they did the pyramids, 
Do you think that was under instruction from um, from somebody else? You know, oh, I'm loving it because everything that's I'm starting to watch, and I think it's Gaia and Ancient Aliens. And yeah, it's, it's actually there. There is a lost civilization. There has to be because the maths is there, and yeah. we we've said this in a bunch of shows. Our our preconception of who was hanging around at the time was a bunch of farmers, a couple of guys in lion cloths, hitting things with sticks over the head. They're not charting the stars no, in exactly. Stonehenge and on different parts of the planet, yeah. having not been seafaring. And and never mind, you know, that you just they were probably still flat earth, square tech. There's no way. There's a total civilization gone whether it be an earth one mm. or one that was seen and gone mm. and restarted, I do think, you know, there's, there's, we, we've been probably reseeded or kickstarted or there's a lost civilization because of the flood. And again, it's like when, when the environment, like my, my daughter was only saying earlier on, like if mm. you don't get those weeds, could come back in two weeks, they'll be in the house. If you leave a bit of the house alone for half a year, It'll, it'll already be becoming derelict. It'll be yeah, now metal will disappear as well. Yeah. There, there's a lot, a lot that says out there because once you go 10, 20, 30,000 years, we don't know what we're looking yeah, for. The exactly. evidence is gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And did you see, I mean, the one that really got me at the time, I remember reading about it years ago, was that I think it was the Mayan civilization and they worshipped the god, the dog star, Sirius. Well, they couldn't actually even see Sirius from the sun. Whatever, whatever way it was, they couldn't see this particular star most of the year. So yeah. why on earth would they be worshipping it? You know, uh, it was like hidden behind another, the brightness of another star. Oh, I know, you know what you're saying. It's there. like, what? How do they even know it's there? You know, there's matter. I think it was Stephen Hawking and a bunch of the mathematicians. What they did when we had the computing power in the last fifty years. We, 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 we're charting the stars. We're, mm. we're, you know, our telescopes are getting smarter and they're looking a billion miles away and billion light, not miles, light Thank years. We're, we're seeing, it keeps on getting bigger, larger. Every time we think we found a barrier, it's no, that's a subset of a bigger something else. But we can see further into the, into the, out of the box. Mm. But at the same time, the computing power is letting us see further and measure more. But what it's also doing is when we started to backtrack the maths of where the stars were 5,000 years ago, it's not where the stars are now. It's no. where it was then. And all these triptychs of pyramids on different sides of the planet are aligning up with multiple different star constellations at different points in time. So where we thought one was 5,000 years old, you might go, oh, hold on a second. It's tracking this thing 50,000 years yeah. ago. Yeah. And it, there's a very interesting, that, that's what becomes much more interesting. Even if it was in the night sky then, now you're going back further in time where you'd have less tech. They've got a couple of chisels and a hammer yeah. and they're building mathematical star-aligned, you know, solstice. Yeah, like, like that computer systems. thing they find that was flattened and they, I forget what you call it, that anomaly, which they find in ancient Greece or something, and it, or at the bottom of the ocean somewhere near ancient Greece. And it's actually like a little computer and it's actually been oh, flattened. And, that's so, the, and then they, 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 they beep it. Imagine, I mean, how... But even how metal, that? even... Yes, you know, and again, it's in metal, yeah. That's yeah. interesting because there's a bunch of... You know, I think outside of Japan, there might be a bunch of pyramids under the water. What we are is when we're tracking back to 10s and 20s, we're tracking through ice ages as well. And yeah. we're tracking through floods and what would have been coastal then versus coastal now. Yeah. Yeah. So we're looking, what's really happening is we're looking in the wrong places. Where, you know, it's, and when you talked about the Mayans, you know, now we have, uh, I think it's actually an Irish company that can, you know, count trees and by, by yes, using certain technology. So, uh, yeah, from and, the but thing. They're starting to see, through the Amazonian forests, they're yeah. seeing through the dense such and such, and, go, and even in China, there's thousands of pyramids. They're yes. going, they're just covered. But now we're yeah. looking through style. That's right, and, and they going, can see all these cities. They didn't even know were there, and there's all pyramids mm. and temples and. Goodness and the numbers else. are in the hundreds. Of, they're saying we were expecting villages, and the cities are in the hundreds of thousands of mm -hmm. size. Mm -hmm. and, and and that's that's that will again come back to what you're saying. Are we looking in the right places? What are we looking for? We're assuming that they're in the Stone Age, and what could probably be happening is no, they were ahead of us. They were flying around. You know, mo most of the programs I were saying is they, 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 and George always says this: people draw what they see. Mm -hmm. And when you're on different sides of planets and you're drawing, you're drawing shiny little craft with little men with, with funny-looking heads wearing spacesuits. Yeah. Five and fifty thousand years ago, you're not 
going from a stick insect horse to this thing. You yeah, know, exactly. it, it, you know it, there is a lot. Well, that throws it back to you again. Yeah. Well, well, Terry, Terry Pratchett and uh, Stephen yeah. Baxter yeah. have a series of books called The Long Earth and The Long Moon and The Long Mars. And what's interesting about there is that you were talking about, are we looking in the right place? Well, their premise is that basically there are parallel universes ad infinitum. Mm -hmm. And in this particular story, they're able to go from one to the other to the other. And in each each system, the Earth has evolved in a totally different way. And mm -hmm. they begin to realize that there's all kinds of possibilities they hadn't even thought about because literally they were looking in the wrong direction. They were thinking they had to go out into space where it was just there on the Earth. They just had to go through a different door. And I think those those are things that we have to think about. There was a guy called um, Colonel Bird uh, around about the end of the Second World War. Um, they thought the, the Nazis had gone off to the, the uh, Antarctica or, or something similar to that. And they took an exp expeditionary force down to Antarctica. And uh, there is a story in his diary about how he flew into this cave and there was a massive great big place under, under, in the, underneath the earth that could house civilization. And they ended up having to flee. This is the this is the U.S. forces had to flee from the Atlantic, uh, Antarctica rather, because they were outnumbered, outgunned by whoever it was that was down there. And they they basically had a a big retreat. And they're talking about you know there, there is now not aliens. It depends on how you define the word alien. Alien doesn't necessarily have to represent someone that's off planet. It could be someone that's alien to the way that you you see yourself. There's something mm. else. They're the other. And I think that's that's quite often uh, the, the biggest problem that we have is that um, when someone is alienated, they're someone that's from a different coming from a different perspective, and that's something that we have to look at. And I think it's it's keeping all options open. We live in a society where quite often, like a gambler or a magician, the magician will be doing one thing in one set of hands. And his other hands that's behind his back, because he's got yeah. double hands, is doing something totally different. And where the trick is, is not where he's guided you to look, it's in the other direction. Mm -hmm. And quite often in plain sight, you're, we're all missing what we should be actually looking yeah. for. Well, I like what you're saying there, George. Yeah. That's yeah. the wording. Yeah. What, it, whatever happens in the next few weeks, <clears throat> now we're all assuming the same thing. It's alien related or not, or nothing. We don't, we're, actually, most people are saying we're going to be very let down. There's going to be a, not, a whole lot of nothing mm. going on. But I like what you said. It's hiding in plain sight because if they've been there the whole time, and, we're, and we have these, actually, I think they nearly have to, if you were there the whole time, there's so many, actually, I love when you see CTV, uh, see, if you see CCTV on Garda Patrol, and you have a fuzzy picture of whoever the criminal is. Yet we're all with full 4 HD cameras everywhere you look, and we can pick like a bit of dust off the moon and somewhere <laughs> in a different solar system, but we cannot get a clear photograph of someone six foot away when you need to. When Same you thing again. Exactly. You're, you've got a 4 HD camera looking out of the plane, but when you see the thing, it's a fuzzy something else. And mm -hmm. it's a, it doesn't, no, other than they have some sort of, um, you know, technology that makes a fuzzy. Yeah. There's a misconception that you have there as well, which is something that was picked up uh, uh, on one of the uh, Joe Rogan um, programs. He was talking to, I forget his name, uh, it's um, Tyson, uh, DeGrasse Tyson. Tyson. Oh, yes, DeGrasse, yeah. Yeah, okay. And uh, he was talking, he had got a, um, a magpie filling up a bottle uh, with stones so that it could reach the water that was inside it. But the thing was, the camera was only about three foot away. Now, yes, we do have these 4K cameras, but as soon as you use a telephoto lens and you handhold, well, the image just goes all over the place and it becomes fuzzy as well. And most of the time, when we're zooming in, uh, most zoom lenses, when you try to focus, they have a shallow depth of field. So you can't really get the image in focus. And that's one of the biggest problems that uh, is actually going on. If you have it in wide angle and you're looking at some object that's fairly big in front of you, you can pick it up pretty, pretty clear. And there's mm -hmm. some of the the the, the problems. I love the technical talk there from mm. the experts. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely, no, no. <laughs> on the on term, not Terminator. You have alien and predator chasing your ass down the street, and you can't get a clear photograph because of the technical focusing and twiddling yep. bit on your camera. <laughs> I think it's more the fact you're going, Mother of God, there's a spaceship in front of me. I don't know where I can't turn the camera on. I, don't, I'm in don't shock. Don't forget, though. Don't forget the problem is there <laughs> that we're talking about popular culture, where the art and craft of the filmmaker is to make sure it is sharp. 
Now, this brings us to another another anomaly, because I remember 2001 in 9-11. Uh, now, the film are in real life, George. <laughs> the, real, the real life, the real life event that actually occurred. Which reality was this in, yeah. Right. Well, I remember I, I, had a, I had a car journey from Dublin to here where I listened to the whole thing that was going on. And when I got home, I saw the pictures. And the one thing that struck me, there was a guy with a camera that had a wide angle shot, if you think of it, something like that. And you had the two mm. sort of t- nice. twin towers here. And there was some woman in the background going, oh, my God, oh, my God, zoom in, zoom in. Let's see what's going on. And the guy got really aggressive to her and stopped her from touching the camera. Now, the problem is that that shot cut in nice and neatly to the next shot that the news people were using, which had a close up with the camera, go either a, a helicopter going around. And he went, this looks orchestrated. This looks designed. This doesn't mm-hmm. look like, you know, what we normally expect to see because the cameras back then, yes, you did have possibly HD cameras. Uh, most of them were probably standard definition at that point. But we got crystal clear images of that day. So much, too much. So we, you should have had a lot of out of focused images on that particular day, which we didn't actually have. We had a lot of people that seemed now to know how to use we- cameras. Doreen, you've let us go off the... I know, I'm not getting into conspiracy theory. Never conspiracy theory. No, no, no American... You know, somebody tried to tell me once in a bar that the Titanic didn't actually sink. No, no. Oh, no it, was was sister, it was the sister ship Olympus. Yeah. And I said, yeah. so what about the stuff that we've, that we've got in the, my museum uh, that says Titanic on it that they brought up from the bottom of the... Ah, well, you see, they went on at night and they changed all the crockery and all the cutlery over so that it looked like it was the... Ta- I, what was the point in that? Like, you know, even if you even entertained that site, what would have been the point in that? You know, well, the documentary anyway, that was on was about insurance fraud. Yes, it was about insurance fraud. Did you ever? I mean, come on. You know, the the, the things that you have to do with your mind to actually get to those mm. convolutions of the truth or whatever is just ridiculous, you know. But then again, I mean, that's what I ask people, you know, what is your truth? What is your reality? Because everybody has their own reality. Everybody's walking around in their own version of reality no, but this uh, rea- now if you're walking around i keep on saying i'm like i'm, I'm not in my own reality it's, is it a reality if it's in your mind and it hasn't been manifested out of it into it it's where other people can interact with it i'm normally running down the road i'm skiing in my head and it's i'm imagining but it's as real to me because you're, you're experiencing it that's what I think Frederick Murphy said. Like, if mm-hmm. if your mind your mind doesn't know the difference, no, it doesn't. Real, you can tell I mean, your mind anything. That's you it. Know, yeah. You can. Yeah. That's well. That's how visualizations work. You know, yeah. that's how athletes get coached. You know, they they imagine every single step of the of the race, and they imagine doing the finishing line and all that, and they do this over and over and over and over again. So their brain is well rehearsed into what it has to do. No, I'm going to get everybody's doing that. So it's just, you know, obviously they're still going to have a race. If if, if you have nine other runners in that race going, hold on a second, my reality says I am the winner. (laughs) You lot are not meant to be (laughs) running me at 50 miles an hour. The reality I love most of the time is the camera guy running faster than Usain Bolt alongside them. Yeah, and he's running backwards. (laughs) <laughs> running backwards with a camera with somebody camera. holding on to the scruff of his neck to put yeah. Yeah. so, so there's, there's, I said it's the reality is you know, you know, we're experiencing it twice removed on video that's what we saw we, we, whoever we were shown what yeah. was there could have been 10,000 people in the stadium or none we're going to get yeah. a little bit of that in the next Olympics if it happens I think yeah we should look at the football now I mean the football yeah. up until the last few weeks didn't have anybody in but of course they just put the sound thing on and everybody just thinks oh we're sitting in a football match you know I mean yeah. look, of course we know that there's nobody there but at the same time the experience that you're having is actually that you're there with loads of people and watching football match so which is real you know now how real do you think webinar space is in the sense of yeah. is it real enough to Feel, I think experience most of the time is you have to feel it. You have to be there. You have to be in yeah. the room. Mm. Now you can learn and you'd be saying the same PowerPoint presentation there in webinar. And it's, actually, I think as you see Tony Robbins now and they're going, here's 50 million little heads. And they're all here now. He doesn't have to leave the room and he's talking and influencing the planet. Mm-hmm. A certain, if we're all being influenced the same way in that same time, then we should all be multi-billionaires on the, on the other That's side it. of the world. Because it does, you it's don't, not you're not. Thing. No, because you you only because the meaning that you put on things is completely different for everybody because it depends on your programming. Mm-hmm. It depends on your life experience. It depends on traumatic events that happen to you. It depends on 
what you think reality is, how your brain has constructed your model of reality. That's why we don't all react in the same way to the same stimulus. We don't react in the same way at all. We react in the way that our brains tell us to react. And that's completely individual to us. So you can get the same experience given to you, lots of people, and it'll only be something similar between two or three of them. Not everybody. yeah, I've been to the cinema and watched a movie all the way through. Just the one like, movie. He only went no, for no, three not, years. Not, right, just quite often. I was there last night as well. Uh, George, but no I, one's been allowed in the cinema for two years now. What are you doing in there? I was, I was, I was in a, I was in the Queen's Film Theatre yesterday. But this right, was, wh- this was, this was back in the Stone Age period because obviously, obviously, I go backwards there and I, I see I the flickering die. lights that the the Stone Age men have with their fire in their hands and what they do with the kind of things, you know, <laughs> the silhouettes. But no, I remember going to see a movie one day uh, years and years ago and I came out and I was listening to what the audience was saying and their description of what they'd just seen I went that's not the movie I just watched <laughs> and, you, and they just came out of the same doors and I kind of go whoa what a, what a different perception yeah, they absolutely. had of this whole story yeah but I mean I well I have a few actor friends down in Dublin and they said and one was a producer and he said that actually the whole experience for him as a writer was he wrote the stuff the actress portrayed what they wanted, more or less, and the audience perceived it whatever way they wanted. So the finished product for each person was very far sometimes from what his actual intention was, but that was okay because this was the creative purpose. I don't know if you agree with that, George, but, you know, I, I, know, I, jump in I think it's George right because George everybody has a different experience because of it depends how you're brought up, what your programming is, what the meaning is that you put on certain words, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Yep. There's yep. your Got favorite it. word, trigger word, George. Have you Trigger. Have you Actually, you started the whole sentence with actually, actually, and the definition of actually is to act out. And what you were talking about in your actually acting out sentence was your actor friend acting out, or your producer friend giving something to someone else, an actor, to act out actually in the act of. George mm-hmm. loves the word actually. Actually, it was about 14 yeah, that's my the earth. First show. Yeah. So that's my <laughs> trigger. I'm giving it back to him. Sorry. <laughs> no, I, I, I think it's um, what I what I find in, is fascinating is that we all interpret text regardless of, regardless of whether it's a, a piece of writing or whether it's a picture or, or whatever. I, I remember going to an artist's um, exhibition, lovely, lovely, realistic paintings of of things, you know, people and mm. stuff. And I went, oh look, there's a face in this little blob just here. And he went, oh my god, you've just ruined my painting for me. <laughs> Because <laughs> now he couldn't look at that painting without seeing well, the thing that I just yeah. described in the in the corner of it that looked as though it was a character that he'd slightly drawn, and he hadn't. It was just the way the painting got on. But I interpreted it as as a yeah. face, you know. Yeah. And he went, yeah. "Oh no, it's ruined! It's ruined! I can't look at it again." <laughs> but it's like, I mean, it's like that's what your brain does, you know. And then it's, I sort of use the example as you know the way you're walking down the street and you see somebody coming towards you and you think it's your friend. And they sort of look vaguely like your friend and they have the same sort of clothes that your friend would have and you think it's the same coat or whatever. And they get, and you totally believe it's your friend, right? And they get to about here, 10 yards away, and suddenly you go, click, that's not my friend. Well, that's mm. because your brain has a shortcut. You know, your brain does shorthand yeah. all the time. Yeah. And it's going, looks like a duck, you know, quacks like a duck, it is a duck, okay? Until your actual eyes sort of say, no, actually, we're looking at it more clearly now and that's not the evidence here. And then it goes, oh, we don't know this person. But up until then, you totally believed that it was true. And that's how one of the ways that we know the brain actually creates reality. You know, what they unless, are. You, unless you actually catch it on, unless you can yeah. amend it because of input from your senses. Well, they're, they're now starting to question witnesses and not question them, question the validity of a witness of an event because when they yeah. tell the story and it, it changes, totally they embellish yeah. it. And, and it, yeah. it, you suddenly realize actually, that's not what happened. <laughs> the, you know, there's, there's a person I, I remember, I think I've spoken about this before and Gavin will probably stop me at some point, but I remember I'm going to try, Spain. I'm trying my best not to talk. <laughs> no, I know, I know. But I, 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 here now. <laughs> I went to, we went to Spain and I drove obviously on the right hand side of the road around roundabouts and all sorts of things. But when I got back home here, I started dreaming about the trip, but I was driving on the left down side of the road and I went but that can't be possible because they drive yeah. on the other side of the road yeah. but my mind had flipped it over because it was used to driving over here you know that was your so, reality here exactly yeah absolutely George was telling me I'm growing but I think it was I think he's he called me fat I'm not too sure what he meant no what he no meant, no you're now six foot eight no what we were saying <laughs> we were talking earlier on about the fact 
he was talking about subconscious and unconscious competence. But what he kept on doing with his hand, hands was, you're subconsciously incompetent, you're consciously incompetent, and he kept on pointing at me with the word incompetent. You know, and, <laughs> Well, he's going, well, he he's doing that consciously. Yeah, like that. Yeah, that's a oh, tell. That's a tell. Or a Freudian slip or something. You he know? was trying to say indirectly. Incompetent, in that, actually. Carving, yeah, yeah. you're learning, you're growing. But all I heard was a double incompetent. Now, if that was a double negative, maybe it's a positive. I'm not too sure. <laughs> I started to look at how I could rephrase that. And it's more that you're unaware of what you don't know. Then you're aware of what you don't know. And then you become aware of what you know. And then you become unaware of Replace what you know. Replace the word molding you Yeah. That's you're like incompetent the there, Garvin. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I know now. Actually, I've moved from subconscious. <laughs> I know I'm incompetent. I didn't know I was incompetent. So now I know I'm incompetent. You uh, just suspected it before, but actually, I need no, to consciously try stop being that right. incompetent. You know, that's <laughs> now that's why you were you were touching on something earlier on. I can't really remember what it was because we never finished. You know, a question as you probably noticed. So we didn't find out whether you believe in aliens. We didn't find out if the planet's being reseeded. You well, you did. I did remember you saying something about you know how you you what you not what you sell, but it's more. I heard you know, it's to deal with teams and management. I'm going, well, we're mismatched. You know, myself yeah. and George are a team of mismanaged yeah. management. Yeah. You know, well, that was before. That was in my previous, that was in my previous career. Yeah. No, yeah. now, now it's just all to do, you know, it's just all to do with the person. And it's amazing. You know, it's amazing when people come in and they maybe have the same sort of job or they have the same sort of pressures and so on. And yet they're totally different ways of dealing with it. And they, they have totally different problems from the same things. And it just, you know, every day it just proves to you that, you you know, your perception of, of what your reality is, is just totally subjective and, and programmed most of the time. I say to people, don't believe a thought you think, because it's not your thought, it's somebody else's opinion. That you well, can I'm going to bring it back, you, bring it back to the question. Yeah. Now, this is going to, sir, do you believe in aliens? I don't know enough about it to believe or not believe. I well, have watched enough ancient believe. aliens. And I would find it very difficult to believe that we were the only intelligent life that ever evolved. Right, so you're, you're going with the maths. I'm going with the meh, probability versus possibility. Yeah. Versus where, you know, there's a billion, billion stars out there. Of course. The likelihood of and so many known. Earths and so many Earths like us and so many... And then you have life happening everywhere here. I mean, it happens everywhere here. No, it's even on, it's even basis, on meteors coming in, you know? On that basis, mm. based on what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks, yeah, if, the, if what comes back out is, yeah, they're here the whole time, do you, are, you, are, is our, are we any different than we are today? Which is the product of that. I, I think we're exactly where a certain group of people want us to be at this point in time because they're actually getting us to visualise these aliens and these kind of... And the, and the number of people that are talking about aliens on the news and the, and the uh, Navy pilots and stuff. And they're very much into this idea that it's a threat. And if it's a threat, it's like... Iraq with the weapons of mass destruction. They've got all these weapons that will wipe out the world. They'll destroy us completely. We better nuke them ourselves to prove that we've got the weapons of mass destruction and they haven't. And I think that that's really where it's going to be. I think we're in a situation at the moment where they're running, the story on the war on terror is running a little bit thin. So they need something else. So we're going to have the, we're going to have the, was it uh, the Space Force, Space Force and those You're little soldiers. You're such a conspirator the theorist, George, no, no, no. aren't you? I mean, it's just ah. everywhere. Dear God in heaven, we're all stupid. <laughs> and we're all just being manipulated by those on high or the powers that well, be. Well, actually, know. the thing, the thing <laughs> is that because of the but area of study. Like, you know, but yeah, because, because of the area of study. people aren't, you know. Yeah. Well, the area of study that I, I've come from, which is media, and looking at the way the media has been manipulated, especially from newspapers right through to our current day. And the fact that if we started talking about shed, 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 most of us are now going to have a shed appearing on our YouTube or our, <laughs> our Yahoo accounts kind of go, oh, George said shed all the time. And now we've got these sheds and I don't want a shed. And, the, you know. All the technology is, it's not about paranoia. It's just becoming aware that the, that the technology is cutting down a lot of our, uh, you know, well, they're forcing us to think in a certain way. And, the, and we are being led. And you've talked about being programmed. And I, yeah. I remember learning how to use the computer. And I learned the computer uh, when I was about 30. That was the first time I had it. 
And I remember going on to to uh, this little computer that was, uh, I think, well, the next one I had was an Atari STE. But when I started getting into it, I suddenly went, oh, how come it thinks like me? And I, and I was actually kind of bowled over by the fact it seemed to think the way I did. But as I studied computer sciences eventually, and we got into cognitive psychology, I began to realize that the development of cognitive psychology, although it's been around for about 150 years, was mainly in the 1960s as computers were being developed because they were using the same kind of ideas. Yeah, so they wrote COBOL and they and yeah, they, and they wrote they COBOL and all those sort of things. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so you can see how, you know, right from the moment we've been using computers, they are manipulating us. We know that because of COVID, we've been put into situations where the best way that we can communicate with other people is through this technology, which now has, and this isn't conspiracy theory, because Google and Apple are already using this technology. They're using facial recognition to look at mm. our emotions. And mm -hmm. I, I'm, as an animator, I, I mean, one of the things that I've been doing uh, with uh, Frederica is we animated her. I only needed to have six or seven different emotions Mm -hmm. And I could portray all the emotions. I didn't have to do anything. I just created the images I needed. And the computer then built the rest up based on the way the sound was and what they could see. Well, it's basically mm -hmm. from the sound and the emotions mm -hmm. it felt from the sound. It created an animation. Fantastic. And I'm sitting there kind of going, this is nuts. This is mm -hmm. what's going on. But what was it I saw on the news lately? Was it China? I can't remember. And yes. instead of just fish, it was it. Facial recognition, but they were no, no, seeing... Stop there for a second. <laughs> you just asked, what did I see on the television lately? Yeah, but it was... was a China? He goes, yeah. <laughs> yes. How do you yeah. know? How does he know it's China? I don't know. Do because you know the report? I, it was I've about, seen the it was same about stuff. facial recognition and recognising people's... And I don't know why. I can't remember why they wanted to do that. Uh, why they wanted to know their emotions. Was it to sell them things? Just, it's I can't actually, remember. no, I in, think in what China, it's, it's all it's, that program on Netflix, which was yeah. that bias... Pro, what was called um, something bias and code bias, only code bias, and yeah. the two sides of the planet being the Americans versus the Chinese use of the same technology. One was tracking every individual mm -hmm. in China, what they were up to, where they were going, getting That's them right, to, to buy stuff, goods yeah. or not buy goods, yeah. using whereas. America was using it to discriminate. It was actually using it to, get, to, to go, your black will change your credit score. It was actually oh using it as a commercial right. aspect of it, yeah. as opposed to the, the privacy aspect. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. But, but that was, yeah, the, problem, that was that, the problem yeah. you were watching. I thought that was really interesting, yeah, that they could tell just from yeah. the official, and as I say, that software. Um, well, I mean, in London recently, uh, the, they, they set up this facial recognition camera and there was a guy put his mask on and he got stopped and was fined by the police for hiding his identity. And he went, I just put my mask up. I wasn't doing anything else. And then they, they stopped a, a young 14 year old uh, black kid and basically hassled him. And then because because the technology had said the technology is based on white thief. males. Yes, yeah. exactly. And yeah. that's the it's thing. not even based on white females, white yes. males. It's so there's discrimination against the, Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But I think one of the things that's quite interesting, and Gavin actually said, you know, that you'd start to ask a question, and I said yes before you gave the information. It's because we've all three of us have been influenced by some of the films and TV shows and the news that we've been watching to. And the thing is, because of the part of the world that we come from, which is a relatively small island, mm -hmm. we're influenced by the same stuff. We're getting fed the same kind of information, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. can, in some form, uh, fashion, be used to control us. You know, you guys, because of your background in accountancy and stuff, have all been about compliance. <laughs> you know? And we're sitting there kind of go, a lot of stuff is about compliance. How do we get people to comply to what we want them to do, which is about control? And you're sitting there kind of going, hang on, we're all, we're all complying to certain ways of doing things. And because... It's it becomes an effort to kind of break outside of that, you know, because you become seen as a troublemaker and all, you end up complying because it, it's less hassle. Than, exactly. Than and that's, you know, and that comes back to coaching again, because, you yeah. know, people will come into their 50s and think it's suddenly realize they have lived somebody else's life, their whole flipping life because they didn't want to object because they wanted to go along with the herd because it was expected of them or whatever. And suddenly it's like an awakening. Like you say, you suddenly wake up and think. I've been complying my whole life. I'm in this program that I want out of, you know, and they suddenly become aware this is not who I am and this is not who I want to be. And then, you know, they try to make something out of it. But yes, a lot of people just sleepwalk through their yeah. whole life. The great question say, there is, if someone else has been living your life, 
Whose exactly. life have I been living? <laughs> Who's yeah. living my one? Is it Graham Norton? I don't know who it is, but they better bloody well give it back because it's about, <laughs> I didn't know, that's, we're now thinking you could have done anything. Anyone could have been, no, it's not that everyone could do anything. No, it's everyone not, but sometimes anything. it's, you know, daddy's, it's daddy's um, company, so you automatically go into daddy's company and then, or else you're used to having uh, four cars and going on four holidays a year, so your family wants that now, so that's you living for them, you know what I mean? And it's not you living for what you particularly want to do. But you're, you're no, yeah, in the, you're in the that, treadmill then. You know, you can't. I, I think we're cases in point. We've sort of gone through those questions ourselves in the sense mm. of if you put the fear in, it's it's the life you could lead, should lead, would lead. You know, you'd want it, you want it, but you don't want the work or you don't want to start to fail. Yeah. Fear of failure. Yeah. If yeah. You, or fear of being laughed at because you tried. You it's know. the trying. And therefore, yeah. I think what before for us is, you know, I, it's not you want a better life. It's it, you, you it, want your own life. Are you, you capable of much more? Yeah. And maybe you've prevented yourself being yourself. Yeah. And let that Pandora out of the box, yeah. but not to a to a Pandora chaos. The, no. the accountancy bit there, what the, the George was talking about, is we have to control the chaos because I can be anything. I can be nothing. So control the chaos. Bring it back. Well, what's something of the anything? Do you want to? Would you like to be or give it a go? And that's that's more where we are now. Going, we we hopefully we can, we know we're capable of so much more. And most of the limiting factors have actually been ourselves it's preventing ourselves trying something else. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's to have that freedom to try. I think. Yeah. There's some interesting bits in there that are about limiting because one of the one of the issues that you tend to have, and I know this with students, is that if you give them no limits, no boundaries, no scope. They they go off excited and then they come back afterwards kind of going, oh, I don't know what to do. This is so frustrating. I was going to go out and shoot stuff and now I now I can't because I don't know what to go and shoot. And all of a sudden they begin to realize in that in that moment that they have to create some kind of framework for themselves to work with, which tends to be a script and then a budget. And then it's the mm -hmm. limitations they have of how much they can really do in, a, in an, any given day to get their, their tasks put together. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that most people don't really get a chance to start to plan things out to, to within their limit, within their own limitations mm -hmm. so that they can actually grow Whereas most people are firefighting constantly and they're trying to yeah, trying exactly. to panic about what's about to happen next and, and then they don't feel as though they've accomplished anything through their life. No, no. But again, even whenever you're developing though, like children, children, that's all they do. That's part of their job is to butt up against any boundary you set for them. Mm. Because they need to know the boundaries until so that they can see where they can grow. Where can they breach that? Where can they but if you don't have a boundary, you get some poor little chaotic child that has proper, you know, really poor developmental skills and so on. People do need boundaries, but not to the extent where they're limiting yes. their actual potential to actually go further. Yeah. yeah. No, I like that. That's I was going to say that till you said it. I'm actually, George, <laughs> cut, cut Doreen's bit out. I'll say it now. We'll put it back in. And we can. No, you just paraphrase it. You paraphrase yeah, it to show well, that we understand. It's, it's, as you said, the accountancy bit. I always thought was well, in the accountancy world. You, if you put the budget in first, then it actually, as you said, Doreen, it becomes limiting, and they're working under that figure, and they don't come up with options which might yeah. be in the stretch. It's like so. You want to be. It's not limitless. But not so limiting. Yeah. We we have to have a stretch in there, and then maybe bring it back to well, this is what we can do based on what's available or what the little bit of a stretch is. Yeah. So I want to we want to stretch ourselves. We have a certain thing that becomes makes us lim limiting. We go we might have a bill to go well, self limiting beliefs. Yeah, but, yeah but you only grow whenever you, you have to be outside your comfort zone before you grow. That's it. Because you have to be challenged in order to grow because that's the that's the thing you're butting up against is the challenge. And you don't grow if you're sitting in your nice comfort zone with no challenges. And so no we want to rain in the chaos. You know, be, be, have a stretch. A ch challenge ourselves to grow. And as Frederica would say, you're going outside the boundary one. You're leading from the edge of the, cur of the current comfort yeah, zone. Yeah, because each time you're a bit further. Now on, we yeah. want to build a new box, the yeah. bigger box, we're going to be, until we get to the, we want to create a level of uncomfortableness, but the stretch of it is, it's not so uncomfortable not to try. Exactly. exactly. And that, now we're going to, 
get comfortable again because we grew into her. We grew yeah. into her fat man suit in my case. I mean, I there's <laughs> one of my shoulders was I got a bunch of suits. They were very nice suits. There was a fat chap I knew got tin all of a sudden, and I got his suit. <laughs> I was going, hold on a second. I'm growing into his ones, <laughs> growing out of them. I don't know whether this is a good thing or not. But I mean, the, you, yeah. You know, but it is, it's like that. It's absolutely like that. And and the same with the belief system. So if the, if the aliens do happen to be aliens and they do have, you know, we're all going to be so completely outside our comfort zone, but then will we get comfortable with it? You know, we'll, what is it that, we that they're will. going to tell us? We, you know I mean? I think, I will think we invite them yeah. around for tea in a couple yeah. of years? You know, yeah, will we, I think you know, so. we intermarrying, you know, who knows? <laughs> the whole question there was... Have we been inviting them? Have we been intermarrying? Exactly. We like intermarry the with well, actually, There's just, a bunch just of to let you know, I'm, the I'm, <laughs> I'm actually one of those aliens. <laughs> <laughs> that would have yeah. been quite good. <laughs> yeah, 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 well, I yeah, think yeah. there is such a diversity of, you know, creatures being ourselves on the planet that, you know, and actually they do say there's there's one genome or there's one particular bunch of people on the planet when they actually done the DNA, you know, mapping, they went, huh, there's a little bit of a funny quirk going on here that's mm-hmm. not in this other bunch. Mm-hmm. So it's like the it's like the uh, not the one bunch of monkeys knew an older bunch of monkeys. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And look, it's like octopuses are up to yeah. Yeah. I, like half of their DNA is completely alien to anything else on the planet. You That's know, there's it. that alien again, but yeah, and they don't know where it came from. I think the reality is, is that when they reveal what these UFO aliens are, it'll actually be the dolphins that are suddenly kind of going, it was us folks. <laughs> You, you know the fact, that, the back, you know the fact the that the, the fact the spaceship so tours dive into the water. The that's the reason. Yep, that's you know, it. I think it's the fourth book in the three, the series of three. <laughs> oh, you know, dear. Douglas Adams, Hitchhiker's Guide. Pure but, fungi, yeah. But no, again, I suppose indirectly you're going. We have been talking about how to coach aliens to <laughs> go beyond go beyond well, I'm up for it, as long as they're paying that's and fine. their comfort <laughs> zone and they better be paying in bitcoin or dodgy coin whichever one it is <laughs> and but i mean they're, if they're here they're already here if they were yeah. here then and they're here now it's we're just being allowed agree to the fact mm-hmm. that they're there and there'll be still a conspiracy theory even if everyone says they are so yeah. we're going to ha- will anything change if this happens no i'm still broke I'm still looking for a job. I still have to pay for the cornflakes, you know, unless they're going to, you know, suddenly get rid of all disease. Now, there's mm. your side. If mm. they're here, then they're like the godlike, you know, yeah. disease should be gone. Yeah. You know, hunger should be gone. We should have won currency. <laughs> They're just not intermingling at the moment. They actually, I think, ah. what's about to happen they're is just observing. Yeah, no, just... they've been, they yes, yes, they've been they've actually, been observing. Let, let's, let's, no, uh, I'm going to no, finish, George. Got to finish. Watching first dates, and they want to go dating. So what's actually happened <laughs> is they want it's this. They want to go. They want to go and date, and oh, therefore they can't appear on that show unless they say, "Right, we're here, and we're paying the bill, and we split the bill." And we'd like to go for a date. Well, here's, here's, here's the reality. The reason why COVID started was that they needed to have a virus that they could introduce to us. Then they had to give you a vaccine so that we'd be ready with the vaccine so that we could actually mingle with the aliens when they come along. Because without that vaccine, we couldn't be with them. And most wow. women who were yeah. I did when I was wow. younger, none of them were from this planet. I know that. <laughs> I can <laughs> tell you right now. It makes an awful lot more sense. Yeah. But the reality is, when you actually come down to it and think about it, one of the things that's quite interesting is that um, through the conversation that we've just had, the reality is that we're all aliens because we all and we all need to think of each other as an alien because if we all think that everybody thinks the same way that we do, that's where we come a cropper. Because I know from talking to Garvin, Garvin doesn't think the same way I do, and I don't think the same way he does. And that's that's the beauty of the conversation. By going out and having conversations with other people, you begin to realise, hang on, the more I get to know people, the more I begin to realise that they don't think the same way I do. Yeah. And there's, there's a little bit of effort that needs to go in to have a conversation because they yeah. don't all think the same way. And we come from different perspectives. And it's lovely to see that different perspective. Yeah, it, uh, sometimes it amazes me that we actually get on so well together because of our different programming when we were young and our different experiences and everything we actually do get along quite well yeah. even though our perception of reality is totally different subjectively than anybody else's so actually we're doing quite a good job 
So, yeah. Well, depends on what the alien thinks of that one. He's probably going, this bunch don't get along at all. They're fighting <laughs> over whose religion's better. What dodgy kind of doesn't exist has more value. Yeah. To, you know, it, it, now, that aside, it's, you know, I, I had some, no, there's probably nothing in my mind at all. There's no I, thing I, at all. Like I think the reality of that one is that they're actually kind of going, hang on a second. They don't like one another. They, they want to box each other up. They want to do, and now they're laughing. You know, no, they're, they're actually the getting fun out of all this. I don't Brain understand them at all. That's the marriage made in heaven. That's what they say. <laughs> That's it's you have to be a polar opposites oh, to yeah. basically meet in the middle. You know, if you're two sames, then it's it's a wrong. Oh, it's two boring. rights make a wrong. I think it is. No, it's you know. boring anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I think I think that's that's definitely the one thing that uh, I I know that having grown up in in the Midlands in England, and and having and, and actually. And, and on the feudal system, as which I keep talking to Garvin about, on the lords and ladies housing estates and all those kind of things, to come to Belfast with someone that hasn't had that experience, and and to 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 meet up with someone that we could have these amazing conversations on a daily basis because their perspective is totally different from my perspective. That's that's what's that's what I find as as, as well. My, you know, listen, I'm from Hillsborough, wife. and it's not it's not Royal Hillsborough, so just yeah. you know. Just watch it there. You know, we're, we're not we're royal up there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got the name Kings North, so we're quite royal anyway. <laughs> there you go, you see. Yeah. <laughs> so we, were the, we were the kings and queens undertakers at one point, so we were really downbeat. <laughs> Very great. No, are you are you members of the Federation or not? Of Small planet? businesses, yes, yes. You know, because <clears throat> that's what's really going Oh, look on. at that. Brilliant. <laughs> Yeah. Was so, it live well and oh, prosper? Oh, was it that way? Live well and prosper. For the visually oh, yeah. impaired, they've all stuck their fingers up at me. Trusting me. <laughs> in pairs. <laughs> They're all out of their Vulcan minds, is all I know. The pair of them. It's the point it is. That's... Now, actually, I'm brought back to, I think it was the preamble conversation which you had with yourself during a couple of days Before, ago. Yeah. And we were talking about, you know, we have to find our niche. Yeah, uh, I think that's what it was. Maybe it was somebody else. Well, Maybe it wasn't you at all. Well, you know, yeah. We've just found your niche. It's mm-hmm. you can coach, you know, wanton aliens to grow. What? You go. You have a whole target market <laughs> unfulfilled at the moment. Now we've already cornered that market because we know none of our audience are of this world. They're right. from some other world. <laughs> so we, that's I, I, I would totally agree with you there. I'm telling you. <laughs> now you need to coach them because after the damage we've done to them, they're going to need some help. Absolutely, yeah. reduce the stress. You know, self confidence yeah. and all that. Yeah. No problem, Garvin. You line them up. That's fine. And I was going to say, you line them up and I shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't, no, no, we don't no, want no, to start no. an interstellar in war yet. I haven't even arrived yet. <laughs> this, this program may suddenly end uh, uh, obscurely as, as will, a really As yeah. Yeah. Mission Impossible, it will self-destruct in six self-destruct seconds. Self-destruct in five seconds, yeah. My well, God. believe it or not, folks, we have actually come to the end of this show. Uh, totally unbelievable. And I you're amazing. Totally unbelievable. You're yes. amazing. So. No, I, we've, I'll, we've I'll just, paraphrase that. You two are amazing. I'm never Ever coming back to this i didn't <laughs> no, know what just... i let myself in for now i know i'd be telling people to avoid no, that i needed me. a laugh today and that was a good Ga- laugh, so. well garvin had actually grown two inches by the beginning of the show he's now just lost six inches going oh my my God. <laughs> he's shrunk in size and stature and everything else because of the conversations that we've just had we've oh, completely dear. flummoxed him do we round up this one yes why not because somewhere on the line we talked about coaching and then we got into the aliens and the fact that sometime in the next month we're going to be told whether or not there are any when we drew our conclusions during the program we all discovered that we're all aliens in some form of fashion coming from various different planets all over the place well realities in one Mm -hmm. sense whichever reality is our reality we have no idea because we've all constructed our own realities and hard sometimes find it very hard to get out of them and i think at this point that's one of the things that we're all struggling to we want to get out of this reality because we need the show to end and that's where we're going at the moment really it's the dolphins that have the last word at some point so that's mm-hmm. bye for me and it's bye from doreen <laughs> thank and you so much maybe maybe if garvin's still with us he'll say bye-bye as well i'll finish it on what i said a little bit earlier which is so long and thanks for all the fish i am a dolphin <laughs> You just, that's what we are. We're, we're highly intelligent. I can barely swim. I fancy a bit of fish, but, you know, 
it's strange at the best of times but according to Doreen it's the octopus you want to watch out for because they're all hands all arms they're up to something they're up to something but we'll leave it at that take care bye for now and thanks a lot and see you next Friday bye for now bye bye Bye. <laughs> hope you enjoyed this video please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications